Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this video, we are going to learn how to deploy a Shiny application for free using shinyapps.io. So shinyapps.io is a service that uh, RStudio provides. So from shinyapp.io, so we'll learn how to deploy our local Shiny app. So usually what happens is you would have developed a Shiny app on your local machine, on your local RStudio. And uh, sometimes, you know, you just want to keep it local, but most of the time you want to deploy it somewhere so that the entire world or your clients can use it. So now that uh, we have built a Shiny application, let me just quickly show you the Shiny application that I've built. So let me show run app. And we'll probably have a separate video of how to create the Shiny application. So, but that was not the point. Uh, so this is a shiny application. Um, you can see that uh, there are a bunch of um, um, charts loading and uh, you can see that uh, there are a lot of packages that has been refresh, uh, referenced here. So you, you get the idea, right? So you have a shiny application. So now if you want, so now you can see that this shiny application was uh, loaded or deployed on my local host, local server that is on my machine. But what if you want to share it with the entire world? Uh, maybe, you know, you, uh, you want to have a portfolio of shiny applications. Maybe you're an aspiring data scientist and you want to showcase your work to the world. So if you are in any of these kind of situation, then uh, the easiest way is for you to deploy your shiny application for free. So as I mentioned before, there are multiple ways to deploy shiny application. You can deploy your shiny application on DigitalOcean. You can deploy your shiny application on AWS. You can deploy your shiny application in a lot of different varieties. But the easiest way, um, which no one would even argue on this matter, is that uh, you go to shinyapps.io. So you can see shinyapps.io. So you can just Google for shiny apps. So you can look at their pricing actually. So uh, for five application, for 25 active hours, you get for free. So maximum you can host five application and for 25 active hours, you get it for free. So then you have different plans. So if you are looking for an enterprise plan or if you are planning to make an application with which um, like a SaaS application and then you want to make money out of it, then uh, you can, you know, choose something else. But in this video, we're going to focus primarily on a free application. So let's go ahead and then try to log in. So once you log in, you have multiple options. Uh, you can log in with your uh, Gmail or you can log in with your uh, GitHub. You can log in with a lot of different details. So in this case, I am going to log in with my Google ID. So after we click log in with Google, you would be ideally logging in with the Google ID. So you can see after we log in, uh, you can see that I have got three applications running currently and uh, so one of the application that we are going to deploy is uh, something uh, that we just saw. So let's first uh, go ahead and then see how you can deploy. So the simplest way is you go to the R studio here and then click this and then it will tell you where you want to uh, deploy. So it just shows where I've already deployed. Let me just clear the list. Yes, clear the list. Okay, the list has been removed. Now I'll go here and then say publish application. So once you pu click publish application, you actually can publish a shiny application in two different places uh, through RStudio. So one is shinyapps.io, the second one is RStudio Connect. RStudio Connect is a paid solution. Um, if your company uses R extensively, you can uh, take it uh, from RStudio uh, as a paid application. So where you can publish R Markdown uh, documents or uh, you can publish shiny application in just one click. But in this case, we are going to publish it on shinyapps.io. So click that. So after you come to this screen, you have to actually present your token uh, that is available here. So you go to your account, you go to your token, and then you should be seeing a secret. So this is your token secret. So, so here you have to go and then take your token uh, you have to show the secret and then you have to copy. So basically um, you can copy it like this and then paste it. Once you paste it, you can just click connect account. So you just paste it and then click connect account. So after you click connect account, you would get this screen, which would say uh, that your account has been successfully connected. And it would also ask you in the current project folder that you have got, what are all files you want to upload? So you can pick and choose what are all files you have to upload. 
so where are we trying to upload so we are trying to upload in an existing uh, in an existing application so that application's name is hn underscore content analysis so let's upload in the same thing uh, hn underscore content analysis and what the files that we want to upload is the app.r the main file i don't want content as csv i don't want this model also and i don't want this so and this is a button that says whether you want to launch a browser or no i don't want to launch a browser i can just open the url so click it and then now click publish so after you click publish now you can see this uh, deploying so it says that there was already a uh, already a, a nap so do you want to still publish it so we can say yes but before we do that let me just quickly show you first how do we publish with a mistake an error and then how do we look at it and then fix it so for example um, in this case i'm going to comment this library okay so this library url tools i'm using for a specific function here that is called um, domain so so you you can see this function suffix extract so i'm using that package uh, specifically for this function so now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to deploy an application that has an error so it is always a good practice that you do unit testing and then you do all these things but uh, sometimes you know mistakes can happen i just want to uh, show you uh, when mistake happens uh, how does it look so let's again copy the name okay and we don't want content we don't want this we don't want this and we don't want to launch the browser so let's publish it so it would take quite some time it's asking if you can replace it i happily replace it so you can see that it is saying it's deploying the shiny application it's trying to upload the bundle it takes a bit of time um i'm uh, going to probably pause this recording at this point uh, and then you know um, start when this is done rather than you just waiting for few minutes and then looking at my screen for nothing you can see that this has made progress and it has started installing the required packages so in this case we have got a bunch of packages like shiny ebs4 dash google sheets 4 so some packages are not exactly required for this but some packages are required but you can see all these packages are getting installed um, so the other thing is while you are deploying you can still run your app and see so maybe if i just click run app you would be able to see the app loaded here uh, while it is deploying because these two are totally two different process so you don't have to be bothered about it so it is uh, right now installing all the required packages we'll wait for it to install all the required packages and then we'll go ahead and uh, see uh, if it is successfully installed so meanwhile you can actually see that this app doesn't have any error when i run locally it doesn't have any error even if i have commented the library is primarily because in this current session i had already loaded the library so it doesn't have to be loaded again that is why this app is able to run properly without any issue had i restarted the session and then ran this code this would have probably shown error because we are trying to uh, artificially uh, simulate an error situation here so finally it has installed the packages it has installed the files now it's uh, pushing the image uh, to the server so that's what it is going to do um, once it pushes this uh, image it, it, it will give us the url from where we can actually get a look at this app so if you if you are uh, like interested in meanwhile seeing what is happening you can refresh your dashboard once you refresh your dashboard uh, you can actually see what's happening you can go to that application go to application all and then you can see this application since i already deployed it is uh, it is showing us running um, but uh, you can actually see it is activating the instances terminating the old instances and uh, let's refresh it and see still shows it's running so a deployment is completed it has given you the url where the deployment has happened so you can copy the link go there and then click and open so this is one way you can open otherwise you can go here and then click the link both both these links are going to take you exactly to the same place so there is um, nothing different in that it's uh, taking a li little bit of time so it's right now reading the files uh, the input file so i have an input csv in that and as expected as we wanted it is showing an error it says an error has occurred check your logs 
contact the app author for clarification so it's the same thing everywhere and uh, you know that we are the app author so what has gone wrong so you don't get to see anything here so that is where you have to now go inside the app so go from dashboard so it'd be ideally on the dashboard from dashboard go to applications once you go to applications go to all the applications from all the applications click the settings this is your settings icon click the settings once you say, see the settings you can actually see the application usage so the application has been seen by people when i had deployed it previously so now we are going to see the logs click it uh, click the logs once you click the logs you can see that there is an error okay so and where is that error very similar to how you usually debug uh, uh, your normal R application R code snippet so you can do the same thing so the error here is uh, when they are trying to do suffix extra they cannot find a function called suffix extra so they they couldn't ideally locate suffix extra and we know that is primarily happening because of one simple thing that we did which is the package that loads the function suffix extra we did not load it so now you can uh, disable it and uh, if you have if, they, if there is any other package that you don't want necessarily you don't have to uh, like install it uh, i have not used uh, google sheets 4 in this uh, so i'm going to comment it the same goes for these packages also i have not used it so i can just simply comment them and then i can save it and then again once again i can go here in case if i want to load and reload and try i can do that but uh, i don't want to do that i can just go here select the files that i want i don't want content i want hackathon i want app.r and i don't want to launch a browser and then i'm going to say publish so this time ideally it wouldn't take a lot of time to deploy it unlike previous time so you can actually notice uh, if you're doing it yourself you can actually notice the difference it would take much lesser that much lesser time than how much it took last time so let's stop the shiny application it's not quite required so as you can see this has made progress and it is in the final stage of deploying the application so unlike i expected it didn't actually take much lesser time it really took a little bit of time as before so now we have the url let's go back meanwhile we'll leave the logs there open it again uh, please uh, make uh, sure that your app is not open for a very long time because shinyapps.io gives you 25 25 24 i'm sorry i forgot free active hours which means the number of time that you keep your app open is uh, counted uh, so this is a um, problem with my browser but the idea is you can see that um, the app is opened uh, let me open it in a different browser for you so i just opened it on a different browser i don't know why my brave was creating problem so you can see the app has been successfully deployed so whatever we uh, created has been successfully deployed so if you are not using it after you close it uh, you can go back to the application so you can see all applications you can have a look at few settings like um, you can see the metrics uh, like uh, your basic memory usage how much you have used 500 mb is too much actually a number of hour workers cpu usage if you want to bring down or if you are going to hit limit so the urls that you have uh, like you want to add any uh, url along with this thing so you can have a i mean uh, if you want have a custom domain you can add it here so how many users you want to give access to so if you want to delete it delete it archive it archive it or if you want to restart the instance you can restart the instance and basically you can look at the logs here so that's it basically uh, it's very simple process for you to deploy your local shiny application like i said before uh, thanks to r studio r studio gives uh, gives us uh, 24 i think free hours of uh, appli shiny uh, deployment uh, and uh, you can use it pretty much i've got an app you know running for uh, quite some time so this video is not affiliated with r studio by any means but i'm just thankful uh, for the uh, contributions that they are doing for our community and open source community so that is why i'm thanking but this application is this video or this channel has no affiliation with our studio so i hope this video was really helpful i'll probably put this code uh, on github uh, so you can uh, have a look at it if you really like this video please like this video and then please subscribe to our channel and also spread the word about this channel to your friends and uh, I hope you try to deploy your own shiny application. And if you deploy it, please let me know in the comment section or share it on Twitter. Until next video, see you. Take care of yourself.